During the age of mass media, reputation was a construct. Fame and infamy could be engineered at the whim of anyone with a cash and influence. It was also fleeting. Someone's name could be on the lips of millions one day, and they could fade into obscurity the next. In the wasted world, reputation must be earned. It also spread slowly, almost entirely by word of mouth. There are few who could be fairly called famous and only a handful of living legends. Fame is often born of good stories featuring a lead character with some distinctive feature that is intriguing enough to lodge itself in the memory. Such as being a feared hand-to-hand -hand combatant with a beautiful multicolored braid of hair. Welcome back. Uh, we have uh, most a big chunk, I think, a double handful of our core cast. Uh, we're going to begin with D, Eric, Goldwater, and Tor. Uh, the four of you, and we're actually not going to do super short things today. If you're first time joining us, uh, go back to one of the previous episodes. We describe ourselves a lot. Um, refer back, please. So these four people are, are currently on an expedition. Uh, picking through the remnants of a place called the Fashion Silo. So the Fashion Silo was a fast fashion uh, for less, like it was the kind of place that was forever selling uh, markdowns. When you looked at it, the markdowns were printed on the tags. So they were engineered to be markdowns from the jump. Uh, and they are in the company of a new person. Uh, this person is uh, Lambda. Lambda is described as follows. Caden, take it away, please. So Lambda is a mutant scavenger uh, who is relatively short, but wearing a collection of sewn together bits of bright colored fabric to stand out against <laughs> the very dark and depressing wasteland. It is hodgepodge from a not insignificant amount of clothing found across the wasteland and picked specifically for the bright and colorful pieces that remain from them. They are specifically out to get the best and brightest pieces of clothing still available. <laughs> So as you watch, uh, Lambda has a couple of things and is uh, has a very skilled hand and a very keen eye uh, and has a tape measure. So it's doing the thing, coming up to certain things and, and, and measuring. Also probably has a couple of rings of uh, uh, color swatches uh, gotten from scavenge, from paint shops, uh, also from uh, clothing stores, like any number of places, but as scavenged things that other scavengers had no real interest in. Uh, but were very, very important uh, to Lambda. Uh, Lambda also has a couple of really big, uh, the bags that are, are uh, plasticized uh, cloth. Uh, so the kinds that you would get at like high-end department stores a century ago. Uh, so instead of being covered in, uh, so looking like a Rob Liefeld character covered in like pouches, super durable, you know, hip bags and things, I, I imagine Lambda as having like just a fistful of these bags in, in both hands uh, is not at all what you'd expect a scavenger to look like and not at all what you would, would have guessed a scavenger would behave like their priorities are entirely different. The four of you know Lambda from the ninth life. Uh, Lambda has dot dot history dot dot with Dixon um, and uh, so they are now friends. There's no like, there, there's no drama there, uh, except kind of occasionally playfully. But there's it's not a current thing. Uh, and you met this person who gradually got to know you over drinks because you're staying there. And one of the things they told you was, I I have trouble getting other scavengers to work with me because all they want is high end electronic boards they can sell or weapons or things to make explosives with. And uh, you have agreed to go and help them and uh, you have learned what they're looking for is stuff to make art 
or to make fashions with. Uh, so you're working your way through the fashion silo and uh, depending on the character, because there's four very distinctive reactions, like what would Eric make of the fashion silo? I mean, he'd be really into it, man. Like, so like he's, trying he's on always jacket. checking for, for, for new gear, right? So checking for some bright. I, I suspect that he and Lambda are probably fighting over some fabric. Um, but not in a fighting kind of way, in a sort of admiring each other's tastes in fabric kind of way. So I'm definitely picturing a couple of setup shots with uh, Eric's triumphant goblin glory in front of one of those five-way mirrors, uh, all kind of like post-apocalypse, like mostly broken, but still enough to catch every angle and doing like a, sh a short montage of uh, Eric's fashion finds. Yeah. <laughs> while, uh, while Saplan Pour Moi by Plastic Bertrand plays in the background. Very good. Namaste. Uh, Goldwater, I take it your reaction to this place is, is not the same. No, it's just mostly, you know, seeing it as a, a failure of uh, business that someone hasn't already taken advantage of these clothes and moved into another location to resell them. Um, <laughs> it just seems like a big waste. But also there may be some nice shoes in here or boots, so um, I'm picking through. So I think, you know, your montage would be a lot of like picking up one of a pair and going like, huh. Because the stuff that would be in here would be unsuitable to your general professional vibe. That's correct. You know, like the something with the equivalent of a Digimon on the side, or something that's meant to be super fashionable that's got like a ridiculous heel on it. Yeah, no. Like, nothing that would be, work with your thing at all. Gotta be practical. Uh, you never know though. It's worth it's worth looking. <laughs> so, what about what about pumps though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like pump up sneakers. sneakers That's practical not, and delicious at the same not, time. <laughs> they're not appropriate for the IRS, unfortunately. So D, how, how does D react to a house of fast fashion? I'm so excited. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I would be really taken with um, any kind of like like magical looking fabrics that are like sheer, any kind of like shimmery kind of magic. I'm into that. So I would just be out there looking at all that. I'd be trying to guess the names of more complicated colors as well. So I'd be like, <laughs> uh, Landa, if I could look through the color sheets, cause I like to paint. And so I'd be looking through and being like, oh, chartreuse, dang it. That was luster red, dang it. <laughs> and Torg? Uh, yeah, Torg is very excited. <laughs> this is this is 100% up Torg's alley. Uh, as some people might remember who have been watching uh, uh, the stream since the beginning, um, Torg has a penchant for 80s uh, leather members only and like other such style jackets. So anytime uh, Tor can find something, uh, they are very excited. Uh, Torg also has uh, many trophies on their person from their various kills and is also occasionally looking for stuff that will uh, liven up the different appendages and tokens from their kills. There fortunately is some stuff that's along those lines. Although um, a lot of it, of course, is very small. So there'd be, right. you know. Well, that's why Tor could use the small items to attach to. That's what I've talked to decorate yeah. the, the, oh, the so emblems. Also, wearing it as a proper thing, intentionally getting smaller. And no, totally. And dressing up the different uh, memorials. So pauldrons that are just extra small matador jackets. Yeah, yeah, they'd be like doll, like baby clothes would be like doll clothes to tour. Right. So this is like my experience shopping in most men's stores. I get to play Torque, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I feel for Torque. Yes. Um, and you know I, they might find some little you know accoutrement for their braid. 
little like charms that they can put onto the scarf that they got from B. You so know, you, you've learned that um, your new friend Lambda has the mutant power of luminosity, so it can actually control color, uh, project light. So very X Meny, you know, can can do little bursts of colored light or just gradually create light in the room, uh, illuminate it. Party time! <laughs> so how well illuminated is the main room of the uh, the silo? Extremely illuminated. I mean, you get everybody <laughs> to see everything, right? I mean, yeah, how can you go shopping in the dark? You don't want anybody to come out like looking like they fell into a closet, right? And you probably yeah. wouldn't color the light because you want to be able to tell what the colors yeah, are. No. Like, right? Just a nice, bright, flashing, you know, beaming white light that everybody can see everything that they need to see. It's perfect. Are you able to uh, uh, stop yourself from doing a little bit, not quite disco, but you could absolutely. Oh, the ambiance of it all? Of course. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so there's you some. You want to go to a rave? Patterns. We could do a rave. You want to do a disco? We'll do a disco. It's all good. <laughs> so uh, your your new companions here seem far more intrigued by what you're doing than your average scavengers do. Uh, the last team you traveled with, they were a dour bunch uh, who absolutely refused to wear uh, anything that didn't blend in well. So it was all done, colored, and lifeless. They even had gas masks. Uh, they looked awful and had zero respect for what you're doing. On the other hand, these people are, are I mean, are you literally dancing? Has anyone turned music on? Oh, I think Dork, for, for one, <laughs> if, if the light, if the disco flashing light effect is happening, then, then Torg is dancing and either Torg is making the music or they're all making some sort of music or they found an old like tape player. Like, I, yes, a hundred percent while digging through. We they are that, grooving and dancing. <laughs> we know that Eric carries a musicer and we can absolutely say that there are speakers because there would be yeah. and you can plug in. So you can literally take your music Put a little cable. And, and we know that he has access to both Earth, Wind, and Fire and the Spice Girls. So, yes! oh, we're the shopping oh. montage is what's happening. This is <laughs> oh. what's happening. It's all shopping montage, and we're all going to have a blast. It's a full on 80s shopping montage, right? Well, uh, then shouldn't the Spice Girls not have existed yet? Yeah, the, the feel, though, is right because they don't, <laughs> but I think the vibe is right, right? So okay. I'm like the Breakfast Club dancing. In, in the uh, uh, the library scene, oh, like, yeah. kind, of, kind of like that, but while trying on clothes and dancing to music. Uh, the one thing that I don't hear on any of this, delightful as it is, is a real responsible keeping watch plan. Uh, I'm gonna need a willpower save for Agent Goldwater, please. <laughs> save, Great start. save versus funky. <laughs> Don't save. Come on, I want to see Goldwater get down. Let's go. <laughs> uh, the bomb is a one, right? Uh, no, you all you have to worry about is rolling at least one six. If I know, not, I'm trying to remember which is which. Is it the the new? Oh, the bomb is a one. Because uh, right. it looks like a one, and the six, it's actually yeah. got six That's sizes. Yep. That's the way to remember. Cool, thanks. I just wanted to double check. I got a part of this. Okay, so partial beans, the absolutely charming, whoever will be the tough guy character, where you catch him, like, being grim, but bopping, <laughs> and, like, you get the shot where his ass would be going back and forth, right? Like, it's been at least a dozen 80s movies where the, the Judd Nelson of the group would be, like... <laughs> <laughs> so that means in my mind the only person on watch is goldwater and he's not doing it real well uh so i'm gonna need a notice check from goldwater down a die because of the funk <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the yeah. funk the affliction <laughs> the funk <laughs> the funk monster Caden, i think i wrote for that <laughs> <laughs> I, got a, I got one one success 
One success. All right. So you realize that it's so you have enough detachment that you realize that your team has let go in a way that they've not let go in a while, especially since you effectively lost your home. And Eric looks happy, right? And you travel with him for a period where he was like, he was carrying serious weight and you were literally afraid for him. So on one hand, seeing them in this, doing this is, is great. On the other hand, no one is paying any attention to their surroundings. And when that realization hits, you, you realize that there are, so you know how um, little kids, like usually ages four to seven, like when they're not, they don't have to ride in the stroller anymore. They end up with this unholy fixation on hiding in spinner racks. And they kind of traverse stores like this by going from spinner rack to spinner rack. Mm -hmm. And to a kid under a table is like Hogwarts. And a spinner rack is clearly like an entire carnival or something. Yeah. You realize that you're seeing movement in more than one of the spinner racks. It's subtle. So like if you had not made the roll, it would have just gone unnoticed. But there's something hiding in those spinner racks. Uh, I'll kind of slowly start moving towards one. I'm not going to alert anybody else, though. They're having too much fun. Okay. Um, so, uh, Caden, what do you think? Uh, describe something Lambda has, Lambda has found that is, in fact, fabulous and is going to be redesigned to something amazing. Uh, let's see. Do you remember those uh, 80s jackets, the seven, late 70s, early 80s jackets that were like, shimmering silver plasticine yeah found one of those not completely look, look together me. yes i've seen those yeah yeah <laughs> not completely together it's a little it's a little ripped and torn and it is you know the the, the plasticky material but at least one sleeve is intact and that's kind of more than enough so you pick it up at arm's length and we get the camera go around <laughs> okay like, uh i need God. a um Let's do this as an awareness role from Goldwater. All right, awareness. <laughs> it's five dice this time. Uh, uh, success. And follow that with an insight check. All right. Two, three partial successes. I don't think that makes a difference. So there, you don't feel you, your spider sense is not tingling, right? Gotcha. You're combat trained enough. Like the purpose of awareness is to provide you a chance to react when you might be attacked. Even though you're approaching something that could literally be, I mean, this is nuked, right? So like death could be in there and be like, ah, some fucked up thing Mike made up. Oh no. <laughs> uh, you don't get that reaction. In fact, the little bit of movement, it feels like something shaking, possibly in fear. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna go down on, like okay. down on one knee and kind of like tilt my head under to see if I can see what's going on under the clothes and whatever's on the rack. So did you see the terrible He-Man movie? Ugh. Yes. Remember that little dude that they made that was supposed <laughs> to be their cool alien friend they'd make toys out of but it was fucking terrible yeah and it looked like a garbage pail kid yeah it was like it was like if orco got thrown in a bunch of nuclear waste right, right like 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 from uh um uh from robocop like we got splashed yeah. with that shit right yes um so picture a baby one of those that has gone nuts backstage at like a big flashy musical or like the Tonys. Mm. So like it's literally covered in sparkle fabrics and like remnants, but has sort of a little piggy nose and the little eyes are wide staring out. 
and you hear kind of labored breathing. Uh, hello. Would you like to come out from there and say hello to me? <laughs> I, it was so bright. Mm, mm, uh, <laughs> so bright. Uh, uh, we have some friends here. If you could bring the lights down just a little bit. And so you can all kind of see that there is something inside the clothes and the spinner rack. And looking around, now that you get that in your head, there's other eyes peering at you from other spinner racks. So out comes this creature. And uh, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I know part of my brain is just dropping constant movie references, but um, they're all movies I respect, man. So <laughs> Labyrinth, you, you yeah. know the wonderful uh, junk mother that, was, that had her entire bedroom on her back? So this is like that little piggy mutant dude, but he's got that same like everything that is his is on him. So he's kind of hunchback looking, but isn't a hunchback. The physicality in Fallout, now I'm going to make a video game reference, the miners, like the mole okay. miners, have yeah. a very solid, broad physicality to them. So mm -hmm. like that, but cute and fabulous. <laughs> Hello. Uh, nice to meet you. I hope uh, light is more uh, to your enjoyment. Uh, it, it, it's beautiful. The colors are so bright. So I never imagined. It's quite something. Um, A couple of the other ones start to come out, and they've all got different preferences and the things they've taken. Okay, well, um, and clearly the, the production staff has done this all with practical effects without enough budget. So they all have that bad 80s prosthetic look to them. Not at all CG, right? So it's all like early mask work where you just glue the one thing to the lip and that's all you get for animation. It's like off-brand Muppets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that was my band, off-brand <laughs> 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 Uh, hey, so they kind of gravitate. <laughs> they gravitate uh, towards Goldwater. Um, and what are you? What are you? But what, what's your society called? <laughs> our, our, our what? What's your group name? Group? Do you have one? Good group? Group? Group name? Uh, yes. They turn and they literally huddle. Maybe this wasn't a good question. <laughs> Looks like you made some friends. <laughs> uh, so Lambda, do you keep the lights low? Are they still colorless or do you play around with it at all? I'm gonna play around with the colors a little bit, but I'm gonna dim them a bit. So it's just gonna be like various, like different colors, but I'm gonna dim them a bit. <laughs> so one of them actually sees it out of the corner of their eye and like breaks the huddle and just wanders around staring fixated by the lights. <laughs> now, do we see them as, a, a, have we seen them yet or is it just- Oh Goldwater? yeah, yeah, they've come off from the racks. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, uh, they break their huddle and one of them puffs up their chest and says, our group name is Rainbow Dawn. Uh, apropos name. I am Bert Sienna. Pleasure to meet you, Bert. This is Tropical Rain and Monday Ash. Oh, Tropical, hello, Monday. You, you have helped yourself to our home. Yes. Is well, that okay? well, welcome, I guess. Apologies, we thought this place was abandoned and... Uh, it does have some useful supplies. It has very many useful supplies. It is the most wonderful place in all the wasted land. Sure it is. Before we came here, we all looked 
he realizes what he's gonna say, and he like doesn't me? say like you. <laughs> and he, he actually picks up. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I we can help though. We can help. I'm, Let's dress him up. No, no, please, please. I am wearing a uniform. I must wear this. Oh, okay. We just at this point, to... so can we hear I'm this friend. conversation that oh, Goldwater yeah, yeah. is having? It's right in front of you, yeah. Okay, so at this point, like, Torg bounds up and says, Goldie, make over, please, please, make over, make Me? over, please, make over, Goldie, Goldie, I, make over, oh, I, Goldie, come on. I run to Torg's aid and begin chanting because I hear Torg chanting. Can make I, over Goldie! I, make, make over Goldie! Goldie. I walk over to, to Goldwater and put my hand on his shoulder and I'm like, man, I met Jesus a little while ago. I know. And he would really, really want you to take advantage of the goodness that is happening here. Can I, can I adjust the luminous and make it so it's basically only a spotlight on Goldwater? You absolutely can. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else here can volunteer for this. No, no, sir. No, sir. You deserve this more than anyone. It needs to be you. It needs to be you. You've Torg been chosen. Absolutely agree. Yes. You play yes. with them, Merpets. Everyone writes. This is for no, no. And here's the problem. And I apologize to, to you, the Rainbow Dawn. This is for your entertainment, not for mine. And I I this is not who I am. So when you look down, Goldwater. You see, remember also in the 80s, those practical effects, there was that same booger solution they used for anything that was vaguely slimy. The eyes get like big puss in boots, like huge eyes, and a little bit of a like, and he, and he goes, I, I just wanted to help. Oh, I want to adjust the lighting again. I wanted to like to make it like a soft blue across the entire room. <laughs> And then Torg also at this point, their eyes are large as saucers and they keep going, P -p -p please. And they're like little, little <laughs> tears are coming out of their cheeks. Birds, please. You may choose one scarf for me of any color or design. That is the allowance I'm going to make. One scarf. Rainbow Dawn? You have your orders. Scarf parade. <laughs> scarf for Goldie. Torgy is excited about scarf. They scatter and they all begin to select their favorite scarf from the entire store. And some of them go into, you realize the spinner racks are their individual homes. Because you see the inside, they've sewn together the inside to be an inner wall. <sighs> so there's something their size that are kind of like yours. So they go into some of those little rooms to pull out special salvage to like present to Torg because they've decided Torg is going to pick the scarf. So they <gasps> literally do a scarf parade and they will runway it for you. So um, uh, Caden, what will be the music for this? Oh, I mean... Although traditionally, Mike's been the best at like picking soundtrack, but... Oh, gosh. I'm thinking uh, early oh. 70s pop. Uh, oh, I'm too sexy. You know what? Never mind. That's it. That's perfect. Let's go. I'm too sexy. I mean, yeah, let's <laughs> let's go. I'm so, too sexy. <laughs> so these little childlike mole minor fashion mutants. Well, oh, there's a mouthful, huh? <laughs> <laughs> they start doing runway and they take their lump of, of fashion look and they add a kicky scarf to it, and then we'll do the full walk, do the turn in front of Torg, and uh, one goes to the side, and they must have seen something on uh, Channel Infinity, and they literally will start narrating, like, oh, they made a bold choice. I'm not sure I would have gone with the sparkly purple, but it works with the underlying blue palette they've cho chosen for, the un for that outfit. Let's see what Torg thinks. And they're gonna give you, like, proper runway rundown uh and and, and then what that one's uh afternoon ash is the, the one that does that uh so torg 
you'll pick the one and and Torg, you're driven to like pull the bright colors and multicolors, right? Generally. Okay, so there's something for you that would be to many other eyes, maybe a bit much, but when you see it, it's just fireworks in a scarf. And uh, the one who's who's chosen presents it like they're presenting fashion Excalibur to you. So is so is this one scarf that's presented to Torg, or it's just the one? Because they they listen. Okay. Goldwater said one, so they they are hoping you pick the one scarf. No, but I mean, are they presenting me with one, or they're presenting me with options, and then Torg? Oh, picks they the did one. a whole thing. They showed you like twelve. Okay, and yeah. so is this the one that Torg picked? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Do oh, you... no, 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 no problem. <laughs> No, I wasn't uh, going to role play the selection process. We'll, we'll okay, okay. So <laughs> we'll keep it so, playful, but we won't do roles for pictures. No, that's fine. I just wanted to double check. So can can Torg uh, or I make up what the scarf looks like that Torg picks? Absolutely. Yay. So Torg approaches Goldwater. Uh, Goldwater, have you steeled yourself to the occasion? There doesn't seem to be any. Like they don't seem to have the kind of outlook that would be trying to make you perform or might be judging you, right? Like they, but they also seem to view all this very differently than you do. Uh, and it's clearly they were like, <laughs> to you, to them, you look like a starving man. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see they're all looking eagerly like, hoping to make your life better, which is, they seem super wholesome little spinner rack trogs. They do. Uh, Torg approaches. Can you describe the chosen Excalibur scarf? Yes. <laughs> so, Torg approaches, beaming, Massive, massive, massive grin on their face. Torg is holding the scarf like it is the most gentlest puppy, small, little, sweet baby rip it's ever seen. <laughs> and it's silk. Starting off, it's silk. It is very, very, very long. And it has these gorgeous silk tassels on the end which are all different primary colors. The scarf itself is yellow, but not a neon yellow, more like a golden sunshine yellow. More like the yellow of an IRS badge. And the print all over it is like Keith Haring style dollar bills and little Keith Haring style people like all over it. And, and Torg is, is so, so proud because Torg is positive that they found the perfect, perfect upgrade that Goldwater couldn't possibly be angry about. The uh, reaction so, to the little Murpets is kind of like in uh, Toy Story, the little alien dudes. They go, <laughs> they all, they all go, and they all then do like a little kind of a golf clappy thing. The scar. The yeah. scar. <laughs> Excalibur. All right, cold water. And then Torque just goes, huh? Huh? <laughs> uh -huh. I'll, I'll take uh -huh. it and hang it loosely around my neck so that the tassels do not hit the floor. Um, I'll nod to Torque and I'll turn back to the um, Rainbow Dawn. Thank you for this gift. I appreciate it. And I appreciate that you took time 
uh, to welcome myself and my friends. The youngest of them comes up and, and grabs your sleeve gently and pulls you over to the five mirrors mm -hmm. and wordlessly pulls you up to the mirrors. Do you go? Yeah. So I think we would get an insert of an anime shot where you're looking very much uh, uh, cowboy bebop. Uh, I'm picturing like the very muted suit with that scarf being like, whoosh, like and actually fucking somehow totally works and gives you like a plus two charisma. <laughs> but I think for even a moment, it's because it's always up to the player how to react. But I think what I can say narratively, <laughs> for at least a moment, there would be that you would see that in the mirrors. Whether or not you choose to internalize that or not is entirely up to you. But you see that handsome guy with the kicky 70s porn scarf, uh, you know, the, the Emmanuel in Paris, that look. I think that's kind of what you're, you're dealing with here. In short, you look Italian. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my brand new suit, my brand new business suit and my long scarf. Yeah. <laughs> This feels appropriate. And, and Torg, Torg just says, Goldie, Goldie, understand? Goldie, get it? Goldie, get money. You, taxes. Goldie, like tax man. Oh, the, the symbols? Yes, of course. Insightful. <laughs> you have a impeccable style, Torg. Yeah, I, I mean, from a certain point of view, they kind of do look like little dancing text my text man all up and down the scarf. So I'm gonna cut away to the group uh, being back to the nine life, uh, ninth life, and we're gonna have uh, 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 Goldwater shift basically on the roof, the security shift. Uh, this Eric takes the longest shifts, although since his encounter with Jesus, I'm so happy I get to say that sentence out loud. Uh, he hasn't been as fixated on doing it all the time, right? He's more interested in spending some time playing cards, hanging out, drinking. So he's not like always been on the roof like he used to be. So the key question I have to ask is, while you're on the roof, are you wearing the scarf? Um, yeah, I think I've, I, I think I've taken to it a little bit. Um, I didn't really like the circumstances, but it does look nice. Um, so I think the, the environment will have to accommodate you uh, by like there being enough of a breeze to have it like you know waving while you're out there and you've got like the binoculars so you look extra dashing. Yeah, it's got to look good. It's got to. I, I need to have a striking pose so the wind's got to work with me. So this is the following day, and uh, you're looking down the road. We get a, a smashing shot of how uh, schmexy you look, and you're looking back down the road towards the approach, and you see. Um, a little bot. So it's a bot kind of like, not even bots we have now in the real world, kind of like bots we had three years ago. So generally just boxes with wheels. So they're more like kids remote control coin uh, toys than full bots. Uh, and it is chugging down the road. Uh, and you notice from, even from a distance, two things. One, there is a message taped to it. And two, what looks like Torg's braid is also tied to it. All right, I'll uh, make my way down from the roof. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Lambda, uh, are you uh, a card player at all? Would you be playing cards with Eric, or would you be like in the corner of the room, like having? taking over the booth like to work on a design or something like what's your downtime look like uh let me let me double check something <laughs> <laughs> uh not long like uh it would probably be very fast right very fast what uh, downtime, like just like kind of very. Oh, no, just, no, I like, meant like when you're not on. Oh, a, okay. Are you like 
working on our projects. We were hanging out with the your new companions. Oh, I'm 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 showing off like whatever little wares to anybody and everybody who will who will listen. Like here's so, everything I here's the new stuff. Here's the new attributes, the new the new little bits of attire. Can I interest you in these are for for anybody who may be interested if you would like here is the new amazing things that we have. Would you like to to partake? Would you like to join me in the in in the amazing world of color? Besides this. So please have the folding table and be the little crafter <laughs> booth at Elysium. Like, you know, where they have like old tour shirts that have been reworked into like bak baklavas and like jewelry made from old cassette tape labels uh, and that kind of stuff. And I love the idea of you doing the hard sell when there's four people in the room, which is also pretty consistent with Alyssa. Um, <laughs> so it sounds though like Eric and Torg are probably shop and, and uh, D are probably shopping because I saw a bunch of positive reactions. So even though you have a very limited clientele here, there are vaults being kind of thrown in. The, it's very much a take my money kind of situation. Eric keeps trying on different um, shoulder pads from the different <laughs> from the different things. So he keeps tearing out the shoulder pads and sticking it in his jackets to see, like, not to try and build his shoulders up, but to see how square he can make them. Because he once saw a picture of Merritt Buttrick from uh, Square Pegs. And wanted to see whether or not he could make the like astro shoulders thing happen. So, uh, Mr. Delonzo, my, my ex wife literally worked downtown in Chicago during a working girl that her time has come period where the shoulders were like to cut things with. Yeah. The pads where they did that, they were like a 90 degree. Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, so you're working with that. Meanwhile, outside, Goldwater. Uh, you approach the thing. So on the side of it is stenciled uh, the logo of Curse, which is the skull wrapped in barbed wire. And you realize this could either be uh, a proper bot or it could be remotely controlled. Uh, go ahead and give me a notice check. Notice is... I got a partial. You're not a tech guy, right? No. Okay, so you don't, I mean, you look around, you don't see anyone watching the bot. So like, you don't see, because a couple of times like, you've seen the dude with the uh, Xbox controller, like doing that kind of thing. You mm -hmm. don't see that. So this may be independent. Uh, so the braid is made of multiple uh, strands of wig hair that are multicolored in a very similar way to Torg's actual hair and have been woven together, uh, basically making a braid out of them. But the choice of colors can't be coincidental because your first thought was like, I know it's not Torg's, Torg's because I just saw Torg five minutes ago and uh, their hair looked fine. Uh, and the note says, Torg, we would have left you alone, but you wouldn't let it go. You brought this on yourself. Surrender and the others will be spared. Okay. Uh, I'm going to kick the bot over so it can't go anywhere. Okay. Uh, it, the, then, the wheels turn for a little bit like, and then stop. Okay. And then I'm going to go inside. Okay. So you the, With the top those... hat and the, and the note. Oh, yeah. You just got it in your hand. Uh, they're they're uh, all... Working through uh, Lambda's uh, spring product line um, and aren't paying much attention to you as you enter the room because they're all trying on bits and bobs. I have bad news. Okay. What bad news could possibly ruin Torg's best day? <laughs> um. Uh, and, and then I pulled up the top knot and the note and say these are from Curse. <laughs> uh, Torg not 
dumb. But Torg not remember who angry at Torg. Torg not sure what this mean. Well, this is this came from Curse, and he's sort of mad at all of us for separate and distinct reasons, and also as a group, except for Lambda, at least so far. And had captured you, and had you cryo frozen, and then you escaped. And the note says, "Would have let let you go, but you wouldn't let it go." Do you know what this means? I point at the top knot. It resembles yours, but it's nowhere near as lustrous. It's a pale, it's like a doll hair version of your hair. Didn't you have a, a friend you made who ended up kind of worshiping you that worked at a bar in a town near? She lived uh, in the Shire for a while, Mia. Yes, uh, I mean, uh, of course, Torg remember Mia, but Torg not know what this would have to do with Mia, or... No, if I recall, Mia's, like, I could be wrong. <laughs> What's that behind you? <laughs> <laughs> it's in, in the wasted world, magic causes all kinds of strange effects. Okay. God uh, damn it. <laughs> this, this does resemble the braid that she made uh, for herself to resemble your braid. You yeah, think it is that one, but it resembles it. She dressed oh. up as you. Torg, Torg remembers her braid not being so sad looking, so that's why Torg not recognize it. They must have ripped out strands from her braid. What? Mm. Torg slowly starts realizing what's happening and kind of goes silent and gets very, 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 very angry to the point where they stop talking and what, get what that happens a is very a crack, intense look on their face. There's a very sharp noise. A small hole appears in one of the windows uh, and there's a, a chunk taken out of the table. Eric, the kind of weapon that is, is almost certainly a sniper rifle. Everybody down now. Hit the deck. So everybody hits the deck? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Most assuredly. All right, so everybody's down. Um, while you're down, Eric, looking at where everyone was standing and looking at the trajectory, right? Because you're we don't have full forensics here, obviously. You're not going up with yarn to figure out the ball track. But right. You're very experienced with these things. You think if the sniper had wanted to kill one of you, they could have, which means that was a, we we have guns trained in this building warning shot. Um, can I tell the, the distance from the angle? Give me a four die roll, please. Uh, a rules moment from Mike. Uh, when you have a, a logical request for a skill that doesn't map to a skill, you default to a four die roll, which can be adjusted up or down like any other roll. That way we don't have to have every conceivable skill in the fucking skill list. Well, I am successful. Um, it is so it would have been distant range. So not just far, but like where you would take up a sniper position. Okay. And you know this area fairly well and you know a couple of likely candidates where that could have been. So if I if I raise Karen with the scope, can I see the sniper? You're gonna to have to make a stealth roll because you're pretty sure whoever's up there is watching the window, right? Right. Um, but I'm assuming you want to sneaky peek with Karen's scope without making yourself a target, right? That's right. Okay, so give me a stealth roll with an extra die because you can take your time. I am successful. Okay, uh, so you, because you know the area well, and you and Goldwater would have made a point of going, we're going to be living here and possibly defending this place for a while. You would have done walks together specifically for, here's a fallback. Here's a place where we can have a sniper position. Here's a place where we got to watch the approach. And uh, you see uh, that there is someone sitting in a third floor window of a ruins 
that you'd scouted for exactly that purpose. Uh, and they've got a bipod and it's mm-hmm. tracked on the ninth block. Wow. And it's, I can tell if it's on a bipod, then it's somebody who really knows what they're doing. Yes. Um, so I will impart that wisdom to everybody. Yeah, it is not like the people mostly who work for Curse have been Mad Max thug types. Uh, they've not been real professionals, but this person looks like a pro to you. Um, my assumption is that if I can see them, they can see me. Mm-hmm. Um, So I, I get like, like I said, I impart this to everybody, tell them that it, it looks like a professional thing. And it's, if they wanted to hit us, they probably would have. So it seems like it's probably a warning shot. So Goldwater, uh, you now here coming from the position where you left the robot music. Uh, it's um, never going to give you up. It's that song. Mm-hmm. Uh, you realize that the reason is probably because it was used during the third plague for timing, for washing your hands and face. Yes. So it's a song that sometimes people use as a timing song. So basically, they're giving you an audible countdown with red hair. Well, it's probably bomb then. Uh, everybody out the back door. So, Torg, you're holding the note that, that asks you to surrender yourself. Do you throw that thing away and ignore it, or do you head, head out alone? I mean, go with everybody. Yeah, I mean, that makes the most sense. But Torg has the tendency to be super selfless. But I also think Torg trusts the team hey, enough. Hammer walks up in front of you. So Hammer is the uh, a middle-aged uh, lady bodyguard with the oversized combat cyber arm designed for like... Um, right. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah, she yeah, yeah. She walks yeah, right yeah. up to you, looks up at you and says, don't. Torg takes this as as the final sign of they should lean towards staying with family and goes and then heads off with Dick the rest Dixon of the group. asked Lambda, what what should we do? I mean, it's it's me, Whiskers, uh, and Obum. So Obum is a barback that's a goblin. Also in the building is Whiskers and Whiskers' assistant, Moral Beer, who's a big Viking biker, leather daddy kind of a dude. Uh, and so do you want the staff to leave or you just yeah everybody out okay I'll, I'll go run upstairs because you know that whiskers occupies the third floor and generally sticks to himself um, these days if anyone speaks to uh, wants to speak to whiskers they go they speak to more beer um, Dixon will stop uh, by lambda and say can, can you wait for us This this will take. Just, I'll, I'll be quick. I promise. Yeah, of course. We should. I mean, hurry. Okay. Okay. Uh, and he, he runs up the stairs. <laughs> Hammer uh, turns to uh, Eric. What what's what's the play? It's uh, it's impractical to shoot right now. There could be more than one. And it's somebody that definitely knows what they're doing. And we are outgunned at the moment. Marbear and I both have scatter guns. I'm kind of shit with it. I, I'm mostly about. You know, keeping, keeping my hands strong, you know. Up until very recently, I would have just shot and let it all get sorted out. But I think probably it's a better idea for us to go out and figure out our positioning and figure out what works best for everybody. She shakes her head. This is a Jesus thing, isn't it? You have to have met him to know, man. That's just a... So why did you mark on the map, danger, don't go here? It's a long story. Because it seems like you'd want everyone to go there. It's not for everybody. 
But if you want to meet Jesus, all you have to do is ask, and I'm sure he'll show up. I was doing you've it for been coming a really to this long time. for a long time with your friends, and that used to be something you didn't want to hear Eric say. You all for to, to take someone to meet Jesus you used to have a very different meaning, my friend. Yeah, well, now that I've met the man, I can tell you exactly what it's like to take somebody to meet Jesus, and it is a different experience than I had originally anticipated. A, a lot less blood, huh? <laughs> yeah. So every, while you're doing this, the rest of the group is all kind of heading out the back. Um, I'm going to assume, because that's been how it is, that Goldwater kind of takes tactical, leads them out that way. Does, okay, because Torg plays along with that, right? Because the way you put it was that Torg follows the family out. So Torg isn't like boldly going. Torg is following. Oh, right. Yeah, it's, well, I wouldn't quite say Torg's a follower, but yes, Torg is boldly oh, no, going no, along with the family. Certainly not saying Torg is a follower. Like there's a difference between I'm depressed and I have depression. Uh, no, I... <laughs> Torg following does not make Torg a follower. <laughs> Let's never make that mistake even for a second. Uh, Goldwater, I need a notice check, please. Sure. One success. You think that the, uh, the egress from the back has been rigged with tripwires. Okay, I'll hold up. So it looks like whoever has sent that message did their setup first and has taken unusually competent, not curse-like, curse might have hired a pro, might have coughed up some money uh, to take care of the situation, which apparently involves Tork. I can't go out the, the back door. It's been, there's a trap. I think camera-wise would even sweep and see like maybe even a mine with a blinky light to make it more dramatic looking. Yeah, not realistic. Um, Torg, take everybody through the side window. I'll be behind you. And you realize Tork, about- two, understand. Two, you realize you're about two thirds through uh, Rick Astley's uh, most infamous hit. Yeah. So everybody's going to try to stealth out. And by, at this point, um, Dixon comes down and Morabir comes down. And Morabir is trying to pull. He tends to wear a, a, sh a muscle shirt that doesn't quite fit and like chaps and things that he's comfortable in but like leaving the place is not so he's pulling on another layer of clothes and dixon is carrying a cat carrier so everybody heads out the side um i wanted to stay back to do something Maybe okay time uh unfortunately it's probably going to blow up a little bit of the bar not a ton <laughs> a little bit of the bar there's a great sentence um after everybody's clear, uh, I'm going to grab a heavy mug from the bar and throw it down the hallway at the tripwire to set it off. Okay. Set off the bomb. The reaction isn't what you may be expected. There is a series of, they're explosions, but they're not meant to be shrapnel or concussive force. What happens is the entire back of the building yeah. now has smoke. And when that happens, all of you who have now come out the side here at uh, uh, near, not, sorry, uh, far, so not distant, like just over there, you hear weapon uh, like. Ch -ch -ch -ch. So at this point, I'm going to need initiatives. So you're going to roll your speed dice and add them up. Eric, what is yours? Yeah, and there's no successes or anything here. You just literally roll that many dice and add them together. Thirty-two. All right, and Goldwater. Um, tweet. 
I rolled really high. Uh, 28 plus 7 is 35. 34 or 35. Uh, D. D? Can you hear me? No, uh, just now, but not before we said it. Did you tell us what your speed, what your initiative was? Yeah, 38. Thank you. Zippy quick. Uh, and Torque? 20. <laughs> 20. <laughs> your job is not initiative. Uh-huh. You have other jobs and you do them very well. Uh, Lambda. Let's see. Twenty-eight. All right. So the first person to act is going to be D. Uh, D, you can't. So give me a notice check before I tell you what you can't. Maybe you can. You might be wrong about that. Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> so you hear that there are people with weapons over there, but you can't see them. They're, they're behind things. But you know roughly where they are. What do you do? Um, honestly, I'm really not sure because this is not my no whole battle like setup. This is not good for me actually. So um, I think I'm just gonna ready my pistol. Okay. And um, and wait. I think okay. that's what I'm gonna do right now. Uh, Goldwater is in the building. He's just done that. How do you react to that news, Goldwater? Uh, which news? Sorry. Uh, the the smoke, the smoke well, curtain. Well, that was to let them know if we went out the back door. We didn't, but they think we did, so that's good. Uh, I'm gonna now rush to the window that everybody else. Okay, had. so you'll be joining the group, Eric. Um. Eric uh, aims and tries to find a a shot. So do you want to see one of the people up here or do you want to look for the sniper? I'm going to look for the sniper. Okay, give me a notice check, please. And by the way, I'm going to editorialize as the uh, GM. Yeah, that's a great idea. Please fucking shoot the sniper. Uh, (laughs) Just saying. I have a partial success. Okay, so you can shoot, but you don't have a really good shot. So you're going to be doing it with a kind of a disadvantage. Do you want to take the shot anyway? So I want to take the same shot that we got. Okay, so you're going to kind of line yourself up. Okay, so go ahead and uh, don't use any of your feats. Uh, You're going to do this a straight shot uh, shoot test. Uh, You're down one die. Okay. So I think it's still funny because you're Eric. I am doubly successful. He's, he's good at shooting now. Um, okay. So you are going to roll uh, your damage. Score an extra die for me. Okay. And he only has uh, three points of defense. So anything that scores three or higher is going to score two points of damage. Anything with a six will score the crit damage additional one. Oh boy. Okay, so we got four and a crit. So that's five. And then let me re-roll the crit and a three. So so that's 10. And what's your crit value? Three? Yeah. So that's 13 points of damage. Um, give me another notice check. No, miserable failure. Okay, so you, it, the target drops down, but you, you couldn't see whether you took them out or not. Okay. Um, Lambda, so you've got a big gun. Uh, do you want to engage in combat? Yeah. Give me a, a notice check to see if you can see any of the people approaching the building. Sick. There is literally a combat team approaching the building. They seem very intent on getting torn. I have two partials. Okay. 
So you see movement, you can shoot, but like just happened uh, with Eric, it's going to be at a bit of a disadvantage because you don't have a very clear shot because they're behind cover. Take the shot anyway? Taking the shot anyway. Do you want to do it at auto? So the difference between regular and auto is we fire auto. Uh, partial success counts to success. The downside is it's easier for the gun to jam if you miss. I'll do auto. Okay, so click, click. Uh, go ahead and do a shoot. You're down one die. Okay. So one die less than normal. You're, you're looking for fives or sixes because with auto, a five will be a hit. So any five or six means you hit. I have three fives. <laughs> Okay, because you shot auto, three fives is a hit. Uh, so roll your uh, damage for the weapon. Okay. I think it's four for an auto pistol. Yeah. And anything that scores a three or higher is going to score uh, two points. And let me know if you get any sixes because that's also a crit. I have two fours, a three, and a crit. Okay, so that's going to be six points plus the crit. Is it uh, a crit of three for the auto pistol? Uh, yes. Okay. So it's going to be nine points. That's actually enough. So the, fa the scavenger fashion designer pulls out, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, uh, I, I would think you might have like a nickname for the big gun you carry just in case. Uh, what's your nickname for the gun? Trudy. <laughs> so you pull out Trudy and you maybe have fired a few times at bottles and things, but you're like in the, in the heat of the moment, you brrr, and you take down an opponent down. Uh, uh, what is your response to that? Like a woohoo or like uh, any life lost is a terrible tragedy? Like how does Lambo respond to that? Lambo respond to that. Good old trusty Trudy never lets me down. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Tor. <laughs> I need a notice check from Tor. Torg back, Torg found uh, Thumbtack and said, fuck uh, it. You're working so. the eccentric magic of the wasted world, huh? Restoring the world back. <laughs> so okay. go ahead and uh, notice check for me, please. All righty. Let me pull up my sheet, get back, back into serious business. Exactly. Serious business time it's not all fashion shows sometimes you gotta shoot a person no um okay sorry what did you want for you me notice, again? notice check under perception a notice check okay no. <laughs> sorry i uh yeah no, the world was falling apart it's completely understandable <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, I also want to explain for anyone that was watching and was wondering why why I look like I was smiling and laughing and going all with my face while Eric was shooting things. And it was because uh, Barrett and I's dog, Juniper, was sleep barking very loudly um, <laughs> in the background. And it is ridiculously cute <laughs> and very, very hard to not uh, react to, at least. Yeah. It's facially. Great. <laughs> so what, did you get the notice check? Uh yeah. You notice the dog going. <laughs> uh, am, am I just looking for sixes here? Six, any any six or better. Okay, yeah, I got two sixes. You realize that somebody is coming into the bar. Okay. So you didn't see the explosion of smoke. Only Goldwater did. Goldwater right. just came out of the bar through the window. You now hear there's movement behind him. Okay, so I mean, I would obviously alert Goldwater immediately. So, um, you know, I would just, you know, probably just go because I'm so huge. Hopefully, they would just see me waving, so I wouldn't have to yell. Yeah, uh, and go. And I'm pretty sure. Goldwater can, you know, assume when the over seven foot, 40 year old, 200 pound uh, giant looks terrified and is pointing, then there's something behind you. Eric, what's your, fire, <laughs> what's your firearm defense? 
Uh, this is the third one? Yeah, maybe three. Uh, you take eight hits. Oh. A bullet wings you in the shoulder. That's going to be one injury, but it won't be. Uh, so you take an injury, but you won't get a condition. Do you, you, to, do you want me to roll it? Months. Sorry? Do you want me to roll the injury? Yep. Just Three. to time it. Yep. All right. Then we go back to D. Um, D, you see Torg is clearly like pointing back into the box. Um, I am going to go ahead and hit my aggressive stance and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and tear up back there. Okay, so I'm going to assume that the stance is going to be a very specific stance. Yeah. And we're going to have like, a, at some point, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Mike, can you, I mean, can 819 find us a music stinger for uh, for every time D goes into a stance that we sure. can, we can have Colt like play the stinger. Because I yeah. know in a TV series, she would absolutely have a fucking stinger for going into stance. Yep. <laughs> okay, cool. So that music <laughs> plays. And you hop through the window, and you see that there are uh, two people, and they are wearing uh, pig skin. So they've got the heavy leather the cops used to use, uh, and they also have goggles that are tinted, which you know uh, are, well, you might not know. You might not know what that's for. Uh, and they actually have some machine guns. Cute. Do you wish to engage one of them? So it looks like what happened is the trap that Goldwater set off created was both a signal but also created an obscuring fog that they then entered through got it yeah uh is is the fog still happening uh it's behind it's not in this room at all so you oh, would see okay. little bits of it like coming from like the parking lot got it um can i you know, I, I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a, a gentle stab at this, uh, and and hopefully <laughs> to brutally stab them. But I would like to do it in like a home base slide kind of way. I, I, I'm not sure I get you drift. Um, like I want, I would like to I would like to go in and attack them as per usual, but uh, I would like to do it a little bit more like cut their ankles as opposed to rip their faces right like gotcha so do you yeah. want to do a um, cinematic action yes okay so the way that works is you're going to do a uh, a brawl melee cool, and, that for me. and you need to get two sixes otherwise it fails do i get any plusies for positivity you, you, you do not but you didn't take a negative okay you might have um, I also <laughs> might enact good karma. <laughs> uh, we're not using karma today. Ah! Suck it! Did you do a nice? Yes! So, I got two sixes and the rest are terrible. She comes in with a flip, does the knife to the side thing, and you literally cut his Achilles tendon in half. Like you, you cut it. You just watch him instantly like lose his whole balance, like he yep. flew down a flight of stairs, but he will never stand back up. Uh, he, would, he would groan and crumble. Uh, all right, <laughs> yucks. So you hear from inside that wee, which you know is often <laughs> like the, the pro tip. That means D just did something bloody and terrible. <laughs> Goldwater, what do you do? Uh, I turn back to look through the look behind, look back in the building. She is engaged in combat with uh, two infiltration people, and one seems to have been neutralized by cutting his damn Achilles tendon. Okay. But the other one, it looks like she's got it, actually. Like she got them both? No, no, but got it in the larger sense of probably doesn't need help. Where are we at in the song? Uh, it is about to end. Uh, all right. I'm going to... I don't know if I can make this happen, even though I've got, like, run and gun. I'm not really gunning. Yeah. Um, I want to, like, jump in, grab D by the back of the 
jacket and and get us both out the window just because i think something bad is going to happen with that robot you want to extract me yeah okay um give me so that's again a cinematic action uh that's gonna be a run okay you you can use a bonus die but you're gonna need two successes I'll use a bonus die and hopefully get somewhere with this. No, I got one partial, so I think we're okay. still in the building. So what I'm going to read that as is D is not easily grabbed and extracted. Right. So I think D probably flips away without even fully realizing what you're doing. Because D is in full on combat mode, like the anime version of her with skulls in her eyes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I look like my boyfriend. Oh my God, you're right. Um, Eric, uh-huh. so you're involved in a very sniper the movie sniper off with another sniper while you're sniping. What do you want to do? He sniped me. I know he sniped me, right? Yep. I'm so. Uh, do you want to return the snipe? Well, what's my what's my injury? Oh no, it's just literally uh, the the injury. Not you didn't take a condition. Oh, okay. Um, yes, yeah, so I would like to return the snipe in the same way, but I want to wing him. So you, you you're not trying to. I am oh, not trying to hit him the same place. Right. Okay. Uh, go ahead and take a standard shot. If you get two or more successes. You can return it to the same area. It's fine. Oh my god, I am brutally unsuccessful. I got four ones and two fours. Holy crap! Wow. And no fives. Zero. So that, that would mean the gun. If you weren't a gun, a, uh, a gunslinger, Karen would have jammed. But in fact, it may have even slightly. And you're like, you know, stop that. <laughs> like slapped it. Right. It doesn't jam, but the shot doesn't go off properly. Uh, all right, uh, Lambda, you want to see if you can. So at this point, four uh, henchmen, uh, for want of a better term, with uh, submachine guns come into near range. So you have, uh, I'll say three, because you, you killed one of them. <laughs> do you want to see what you can do about another one? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, give, do a shoot. Do me all a right. shoot. And these Let's, guys are not wearing pink skin like the inside. They're wearing light leathers. I'm I'm not a die down anymore, right? No, this is a straight mm-hmm. one. Straight shooting is the only thing I do. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, two successes and a partial. Okay, so uh, that means you get an extra success. So go ahead and, and shoot your shot. So do the damage to four dice. Again, anything three or better is going to score two points. Extra for crits. Okay. Uh, I have two threes, a six, and a five. Oh, my God. And reroll the six? <laughs> Another six. <laughs> and again? Because it, it's exploding, so you keep rerolling it. And a five. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> describe what happens to him, please. Uh, uh, I'm it's firing not, on. It's not good. <laughs> I'm firing. Am I firing? I, did I did I choose auto again, or am I firing? I, I assumed until you tell me. It's okay. Different. Okay. All right. it so much akin to the scene of RoboCop <laughs> <laughs> is is what we're seeing here. Is this 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 particular individual is getting completely evaporated by bullets. And just a very gleeful, like, giggle from Lambda as as this person is essentially turned into what can only be affectionately called as person paste, but it's very bright. So again, as per per Lambda's favorite things, it's adding color to the wasteland. So it's delightful. (laughs) It's a lot of color. A lot of red just went everywhere. So it'll be shot with like, you know, kind of a, a, a uh, um, like almost a peck and paw 
fixation on the the, the arcs and, and how that looks. Yeah, it's it's awesome. very like the more the more streams of red in various different directions, the better. It's like streamers. <laughs> so, uh, Torg, uh, you see that Eric is having a snipe off with a sniper. Uh, you see that your scavenger friend is apparently going to just mow down the incoming forces. And inside you hear that your somewhat childlike assassin friend is, uh, and you probably actually saw Goldwater go in looking like, I'm going to get her out. But you, you hear like, Wee! she's clearly still in there kicking ass. Uh, what do you do? Does anybody need help? <laughs> Where are our little who's left? friends? You need to who's, who's left? There's one more gunman that's coming in on you. Uh, inside, there's one more infiltration guy that's squared off against uh, D, and there's a wounded sniper. So not a lot. Okay, so you said there's a gunman coming in? Yep. Well, All right. Well, Lambda's well, just been mowing them down. Well, then maybe I'll just let Lambda take care of the gunman, and then I guess I'll take care of the sniper? Or... Well, you'd have to run for a few rounds. Oh, right, never mind. Yeah, well, started. then I'll take care of the last gunman then. Okay, so you're going to run in. I think I gave you charge. Let me double check. Do you want to charge? Let me look. Gosh darn it, which window did I have my sheet in? Oh, there it is. <laughs> uh, where would charge be? Let's assume you have it, and if you didn't, I'm going to give it to you after this. So go ahead and uh, roll Brawl Melee with an extra die. Okay. Do you utter a battle cry, or is this a calm thing, or what's your demeanor like? Uh, gosh darn it. Why can't I? Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, you are. Okay, you said Brawl Melee with a extra, extra die. die. All right. So seeing that, Everyone seems to be doing very well. Yeah. Uh, instead of an angry, like, charge, Torg just goes at him with pure smile and joy, like, I'm going to enjoy this because this can't possibly go wrong. Uh, <laughs> very excited energy. <laughs> like, like, imagine, you know, a very large dinosaur just tipping towards you with Lee, but you know when it gets there, it's going to so bite your head off. <laughs> using the guiding pr the principle that we've used a few times of we only test when the outcome is uncertain. I think at this point, we just show the camera. We kind of see you in silhouette. Just there's a crack noise. I, I'd almost do like a Batman like animation of the crack. And the, that person just folds it out. Uh, inside, I don't think we even see D finish the other one. I, I think we would just see Goldwater's face and just hear like whoopee. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Eric, you don't see the sniper anymore. Okay. So uh, aftermath of battle, uh, one of the guy inside whose Achilles tendon was cut is not dead. He's still alive. Oh, who's gonna ask him some questions? I'll, I'll do it. Ah, uh, I needed that. <laughs> yes, and we'll get you medical attention as soon as possible. Ah, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry that didn't seem to go the way you had hoped. I, I, it was pretty well planned. I, I, that, I was, I, is she always like that? No, normally she's amiable and, and cheerful. They catch her on a bad day? No. You just became a danger. Oh, oh. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll start removing his boot and trying to, trying to wrap the ankle injury. He Looks a little confused, but helps. Like he, you know, and he pulls his hands away. Like, and also will reach in and pull. A, he disarms himself. Good. 
so so what what and you're you're um hamilton right no i i heard hamilton no that's that's no that must be someone else i'm agent delano goldwater hamilton oh. hamilton works the oklahoma territory oh so i was told there was a, a an agent hamilton and someone named b and uh eric and and uh the important one was the troll, but honestly, they don't look like a troll. A lot of your information seems half correct. Who gave you this this mission? I'm assuming it was through Curse or his people. So you didn't meet anyone directly? No, we never do. I mean, we're I, I'm a merc. I'm a merc. I don't. I, this is not my fight, except I was paid to make. Uh, you're certainly more professional than most. Yeah, but maybe like we could have used more in our squad. Again, I don't think they. I all we were told is that that B was kind of bookish, something about being a reporter. Like that was not a report, a bookish reporter. No, um, B is no longer with the team. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that explains that. Someone, I hate to tell you this, but someone miscalculated. So if I can give you information you can use, am I getting out of here alive? Yeah, of course. So I'm going to have to leave the area because if it gets to anyone that I gave up information, I'm not going to get jobs here. But you get how that works, right? But it's better than... Right if this new person decides to come back in and giggle and rip my balls off or something, because that seems like a non-zero possibility to me. No, uh, to be honest, I follow the CIA's recommended uh, interrogation techniques, which are based upon uh, finding mutual trust and respect for uh, whoever you're trying to get the information from. So torturing somebody doesn't do any good. I've, I've spoken to people about this before. Right? It's normally uh, about how you feel about it, not the information you get. Exactly. And if I was to say, start pulling your fingertips off, you'd tell me whatever you thought I wanted to hear, not what I actually want to hear. And if you were wired that way, you might get your yas off, but you're not going to get useful intel. No. All right. Well, okay. Here's the thing. Your, your friend Torg? Mm -hmm. I assume it's the one with the braid, right? Yes. I mean, you know they've been attacking Curse's forces, right? Toward? During what period of time? The last couple of months. No, that's not possible. Uh, no, I got multiple sources tell me this. Well, I've come and gone from here a few times, but every time I return, Torg is here. Small gorilla groups, all with that braid. Okay, well, that's not Torg. That's someone inspired by Torg, and that's a different issue entirely. But not. So Torg isn't commanding these forces? No, um, Torg is inspirational, I will say. Uh, but Torg does, has never shown any leadership affinity. Uh, well, you can see where the mistake might be made, right? Yes, if they're wearing Torg's gear and, and, and dressing up as Torg and, and wearing... Well, and because uh, apparently you've had beef before. Curse is uh, one of the worst human beings that uh, may have existed since the fall. So, yes, we have had run-ins with, with Curse. So uh, the only thing I can give you that's useful, and it might, might be what you need to get me the hell out of here, is I, I do know one of the places because i investigated when we got the job and so i looked into places where i might look for them other than here and i got a report i got a place you could look if you want to find these people yes so he I, i'm gonna need to get into my pack well, i know you're not gonna do anything you're not stupid okay yeah, and then all your friends are giving me the the fuck you glare yes i'm not sure your friend you're, I'm not sure your pixie friend is done playing yet, and that's really got me kind of tweaked and nervous. I gotta be honest. 
Don't worry. Okay. I wish she'd stop laughing, but it looks like she's going to kill me. It's, it's really, I'm going to have trouble sleeping, man. Just know she laughs at a lot of things, and very rarely is it because she wants to kill someone. Okay. So he reaches into his pack, and he pulls out a crumpled uh, fast food cup. Uh, Colt, can I have the logo, please? So uh, you, can, <laughs> you can find them, as far as we know, at the last remaining Citrus Caesar in the uh, entire Texan area. Uh, I want to go to there. <laughs> so we're going to take our bio break here. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, we'll be back in about five. Uh, no flipping. Please come on back. We've got more insanity uh, ahead and a couple of other at least small secrets revealed. Welcome back. Uh, we rejoin our uh, team of intrepid. I'm always afraid. I mean, I'm used to saying intrepid adventurers because I'm a D and D guy, but it really doesn't apply here. I always use like team or companions. Uh, team, I guess. We rejoin our intrepid team. Uh, it's the next day, uh, and you have located and are closing in on. Uh, throw up the logo again, please, Colton. Citrus Caesar. So Citrus Caesar, uh, back in the day, uh, had outlets in every airport and a lot of neighborhoods and features uh, a very particular citrusy drink that doesn't taste really like anything else. Uh, and they, they had the logo, uh, I came, I saw, I drank. And uh, it's someplace that uh, Torg has been looking for for literally decades. So the whole way up, uh, Torg has been excited. I would assume Torg has been excitedly talking about the wonders of Citrus Caesar. Uh, and up ahead, there is one. And this is not part of the mall. It's not part of an airport. It's a standalone location. And they're, the standalone locations were kind of like corner lots about the size and in the areas where you put like a White Castle. So real small. Uh, kind of places. Also, generally, they wouldn't have full dining rooms that have like drive of walk up windows because 90% of what they sold was just that damn drink. And they, they come down like a slushy and they have the big sign up front and it's damaged because it's over a century old and it's not functioning. But the logo is clearly there. And I think we're going to start this sequence with like a shot where we do a tracking from Torg's feet up to their face and then over to the sign. So, so Jen, that's basically the face Torg is making is this look of wonder. <laughs> so uh, team, how do you approach or do you approach the uh, vendor of uh, eccentric citrus libation? Uh, you know that Torg does, uh, immediately. However, instead of running, Torg wants to savor this moment and Torg is so overcome with emotion because as you said, Torg has been searching for this famed, rumored, last, last location of C uh, Citrus Caesar. And so it's the combination of 40 years <laughs> of searching. And for a reason, Torque has never really revealed um, fully. Right. Fully. So as you're approaching. And is, cr and is crying, but not in like a sobbing way, but tears are just like coming out of Torque's eyes as Torque smiles and cries and slowly approaches as if it's like a holy place. So again, it is. Back on anime tropes, like the super emotional streaky tears. Yes. Okay. Yes. So as Torque is approaching, it's clearly like just walking straight towards it. Uh, less direct approach minded folks at this point being Eric and uh, Goldwater, you would notice that 
from, excuse me, the place has been reinforced. So all of the windows have been boarded up and reinforced. So it's a place that had taken some damage, you know, over the years, but is at least at some point, probably recently, been reinforced. So there's very likely someone in there. Um, D and Lambda, you notice there is graffiti all over it and it's all in different colors. So like it's, it's everything that's written, it's written in a different, it's like somebody just found like a big box with spray cans. It was tagging in different colors and it's all things like believe in yourself. You can do it. You are special. You are the only one. We are here for you. And then over and over again, we are toward. And in some cases, the Torg was written with the, each letter in a different color. Wow. This is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I have been waiting for so much color and here it all is. And you Barrett, take she... words out of <laughs> Torque mouth. Uh, Barrett's become sensitive to abandoned cars for reasons. Uh, long time viewers know what the reasons are. Um, you would notice the area has been cleared to be defensible. Like any abandoned car has been pulled free uh, enough that it would be hard to get a good approach position on the place. Like someone who knew at least something set this up to be defensive, which is worthwhile, clearly. Uh, Eric, how do you feel about having used Karen? Not happy. Conflicted, so conflicted. To, I think. to fill listeners in, Eric has actually not shot Karen since he met Jesus. Again, I'm going to get to giggle myself to sleep tonight. Um, but, okay, so you look a little less happy-go-lucky right now? Yeah, more of a, at, more of at a sort of crossroads mentally. Not like sad the way he was for so long or burdened, but just sort of, a little bummed out, I guess. And so maybe? Yeah. As you approach, you'll see that there are shutters built into uh, the boarding they did on the upper, because there's a, there is an upper floor, which is normally in these places where you would have like the office where you'd fire your hourly employees regularly so they wouldn't get benefits. Like all that kind of fuckery was done on that little second floor and often there's, there's storage up there. And you see that the shutter opens and there's somebody looking out, which has a little bit of a um, Wizard of Oz feel. <laughs> um, I need, who's got the best notice dice? Was that, was that, six. Was that Goldwater or is that Eric? Let's have, uh, let's have Eric do it. Okay. Give me a notice check. I am successful. So a little slide opens. You see the eyes widen. So again, the, the camera shot would, would pan, pan so you see the eyes. And then it slams closed, but you hear a... <laughs> uh, hello? So uh, I'm going to wait a sec for Jen. There she is. So you're approaching... And you hear, so the front door has been is very heavily reinforced, but there's like uh, a couple of speakers that are hung from it by wire, like coat hanger wire. And through the speakers, you hear, who goes there? You're muted. <laughs> Torg was so 
excited. Tork forgot uh, how it works. Um, obviously, Tork is going to be the first to speak, and and Tork still very uh, verklempt from everything that has just happened, uh, considering Citrus Caesar and this band of of marry them's ready to take on uh, Torg's <laughs> mission. Um, <laughs> Torg just says, while well, choked up still, Torg is Torg! And you hear, and, and those of you that are good with insight, I'm not if you're all, you know who you are. You realize that this is like a call and response for them, so they're not thinking about it, they just do it. A, a bunch of voices from the other side of the door you hear together say, we are Torg. I, okay, can you, um, oh, just, so just stay right there, we can see you for just a minute, it's, it's almost ready. Torg ask what almost ready. Uh, just just hang on, just a, just one minute. Just it's really cool. It'll be fine. Just stay right there. Or, 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 I, because because you don't know. Uh, it, shut up. <laughs> Let me do it. Uh... And then you see the door open. And inside. Picture uh, the Lost Boys. <laughs> very diverse in terms of like clearly uh, gender, race, like take the Lost Boys and make them like the Lost Boys of Boys Town and then give them all Torg braids. <laughs> and, and what they're presenting is a nearly complete suit of power armor that's been painted to look like a giant Torg. <laughs> and it's not, it's real slow. So it's more like a loader lifter, right? Like it's not a proper military thing, but it's like a big, <clears throat> and there's a, a regular human sized person in it, but it's like <laughs> about as tall as you are actually. Um, and they just, Rush forward to come hug you. <laughs> Torg, very overwhelmed, <laughs> and just starts laughing hysterically but happily because the whole thing is utterly insane. And while they didn't ask for it, and it's not necessarily something that they wanted because now it's going to draw more attention to them, they can't help but be flattered and amused by this whole thing. Yeah, you're basically a pile of delighted, and most of them are young, right? Like they're <laughs> mid-teens to mid-twenties for the most part. There's a couple older, but they're largely young. And they're all full of just admiration and affection. This is the best pride ever. <laughs> this is great. Does the rest of the Great. group just watch Torg and Torg's new friends? Oh, I'm just yeah. excited to just see this. <laughs> I just want more of it. Whatever's happening is the best thing that ever happened to me in my entire life. So Goldwater, I think you're capable of the most actual detachment. I mean, Eric could be also, but has got his own thoughts. Uh, so I think you would hear... And this would not register for Torg because Torg is currently overwhelmed by the attention and the focus and such. Can I say one thing just oh, before course. I forget? Because it just occurred to me because yes. obviously I just found out about this plot point. But uh, it's Legend of Billie Jean. So I, I used to give people that played campaigns with me extra experience points if they caught on to my themes and references. <laughs> Usually every game I've got a theme and I would used to give D D like I'd give like a thousand experience points or somebody was like the theme was fallen heroes and I, yeah. 
So yeah, it's fucking Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, sorry, I have to interrupt only because Legend of Billie Jean, uh, hugely uh, uh, <laughs> influential uh, for Tiny Jed Brown. Also, my uncle is in that movie. He was an actor in the 80s. He's technically my second cousin, but I call him my uncle because I don't have any brothers or sisters. So my cousin Christina and her husband feel like, you know, you know, anyway, it's just easier. But uh, he used to be an actor in the 80s and his name is Rex Lee. And he plays one of the uh, bully uh, assholes that beat up Christian Slater and steal his bike. And there's the scene where they're like driving in the red uh, uh, nope. convertible, like down the highway. And there's like the big guy driving with a bandana being like, Ooh! Yep. that's my uncle. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I've seen that movie dozens of times. Yeah, um, and the, the way I found out was because <laughs> we I was wa- I was hanging out with them. And I was, uh, I was like, the movie came on. I'm like, oh, I love this movie. This is a great movie. And they said nothing until like, oh, Steve awesome. come up. It was like 11 year old Jen was like, what, what, what? Huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. The, have... the, the yeah. gloomy edgelord hero that loves special effects makeup. Guess what Mike was watching for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I that mean, that, we obviously is... found different things, but that was mine. Yeah, that's amazing. That movie is the like only rape revenge movie of the eighties that matters. Well, there's a statement, and I want that with like Jen Brown at the bottom as a like <laughs> uh, cold water. You yes. overhear the following: the Torg clearly does not hear. One comments to the other. Uh, they're as amazing as she said. Who said? Uh, when they look over, not having like they were really just talking to each other, and one looks over. Oh, oh, um, oh, uh, and and they headed towards you, and they're a mutant that's actually got six eyes. Um, uh, and looks over to see that Torg isn't listening. Um, Torg's friend Mia. Do you know where Mia is right now? Yeah. Where? Captured? She, she, no, she's she's gone. She she said that she had fallen in love with Torg and went to Torg for something that Torg couldn't give. But what Torg gave her was belief in herself. And she said that if she thought she was Torg, she was Torg too. Because Mia used to wear a braid like Torg's. So then she shared that with us. Some of us grew up with Mia. And she told us that we should be strong like Torg told her to be. And that we could all be Torg too. Being Torg is, is worth it. We've been fighting curse. Um, Answer your phone. Answer your phone, mutant. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, uh, where was I? Um, Oh, so I don't know if you know this, but curse is one of the worst people ever to live in the wasteland. Very aware. I've had... my friends and I have had a number of run-ins with Chris. So we've been fighting back. We've been recruiting uh, from people that don't have other families. Because the other thing that Torg taught Mia is you find your own family. Mm-hmm. So we did. We made a lot of progress. We took a lot of trophies. Because that was another thing Mia told us about. We have an entire trophy room. A lot of years. A lot of years. Yes, I'm, I'm sure. No, no, man. You don't know. Well, I mean, it's been busier than I expected. Most of what Mia said is like self help book, but not stupid kind of stuff. Uh-huh. But the ear thing, 
was a hard sell with a lot of us, but Mia, she had a com- a compelling way about her, and she taught me we 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 we, we take ears, okay? Well, if if you're trying to be Torg, then you take ears or some other trophy. Yeah, we had enough success that we've we've got like a, you know, a Christmas trees they used to put like popcorn. Yes. And they so we've kind of got that, but ears. That's gross. It's really kind of awful. On the other hand, we can look at it and we know, nah, I was trying to find them. That's just terrible. Everything else is boring about that being optional. Honestly, she did not set this up. Mia did. So I don't know if Torg would, by being Torg, would want you to do that. They lean in between us. I, I love Mia and Mia was great, but Mia was a little cuckoo for coconuts you know Mm -hmm. i mean in the best way and i understand coconuts are amazing never had so about this time uh torg is free of the pylon and they're all uh, like but there's a lot of like uh there was a scene in uh beyond thunderdome where the uh kids in the wasteland are kind of like touching the weapons and the clothing I'm picturing that's how they treat Torg. It's like, oh, that's the legendary cinder block on a stick and a mop handle stick. Ooh. And they're all like regarding me that way very clearly with big pie eyes. You've got to see the ears, Torg. Come on. You're muted still. <laughs> Move, move the move the Colossus out of the way. Okay, hang on. I don't have. A, I don't know how reserve reverse works. The torque ears hear ears correctly. And one of the others looks up, and he, he's a little uh, dog boy. Uh, yeah, um, we heard you took ears. Torg, Torg, not take ears. Torg, Torg, take. Trophies and monuments to honor Torg kill some ears, but not all ears. Ears, so small portion. If someone took a lot of ears, that wouldn't be a problem, though, right? Torg think no okay i'm a little less excited to show you now but come on in (laughs) so they take you inside and the inside is literally the inside of a little fast food place with a lot of citrus caesar paraphernalia and you know and, and there's they clearly live here so there are you know beds and so forth bed rolls uh but hung from the ceiling and and stringers like you do when you're setting up for like Halloween, there are dozens of severed ears. It's like they decorated with the aesthetic of, you know, it would look great, severed ears. (laughs) So, so ta-da! You know what Torg say about this? N- no, uh, hang on, hang on, Dusty. And one of them runs up and actually has a clipboard. What does Torg say? Oh, uh, Torg, Torg, not expect to be quote literal. Uh, but Torg say if hanging ears brings joy to your heart then Torg love. But if hanging ears make you unhappy and think it look a little macabre and terrifying, Torg say, glitter fix all. Rico, Dawn, Rico goes over and picks up a big box of uh, spray cans and runs out the door. (laughs) Dawn, 
goes and gets a little canister of glitter and hands it to you. So we should take glitter ears? Tord just suggesting glitter. Tord not say it only glitter ear, but maybe their rhinestone ear or, or color ear or hairy ear or everyone can, can take a different ear and, and make it their own personal trophy with whatever decoupage. All right. Brothers, sisters. Time out. Hold, hold on. Time, time, out. time, time, time. Out. time out. Torque speaks in broken English 100% of the time, but whips out fucking decoupage as a word as part of their vocabulary. Torque <laughs> vernacular not lacking. Torque have great vocabulary. Torque vo Tork vocabulary, very big. Vast. <laughs> Incredibly large. Undicative uh, vernacular, not as big. But vocabulary, far none. Enormous. <laughs> uh oh, we've got we runaway. We chased Torg away. <laughs> Uh, so uh, we'll say that uh, Lambda, you notice that the uh, one that had the cans of spray paint. Yes. Sorry, y'all. I, I had to go get a distraction for our dog because Juniper keeps barking. Uh, so Lambda, you see that they are spray painting everything that Tor just said on the side of the building. Oh, so it's like a whole... So are these these are written rules. These are they kind of look like they're like maxims they live by. Huh. You know what? I love this. I, I mean this is this is so much better than writing things down in books. <laughs> I... And you see the inside of the place is very much like revolutionary underground but it's also like a fan club and there's a lot of fan art of torg like pinned to the walls like things people who have seen or that heard torg describe there's a lot of like deviant art pictures of torg oh there's so much this is a whole little club scene going on here it's all a it's Torg chic. I love this. Uh, Torg, you realize that there's one person here that you don't see. It probably takes you a minute, but eventually, like, you, your brain would stop, like, super firing and you'd be like, oh, you know who's not here? And you see a drawing of her. And it's actually up on the menu board. You are muted. Okay, here's the thing. I want to unmute it, but if I do, that means you're going to hear my dog's very gross, very loud licking noises. I, you yeah, know. I that's to somebody that just added two stars to the stream. <laughs> <laughs> and let's not, you know, lick shame the dog. It's fine. Hey, I thought I'm not lick shaming her. I'm just saying I need to explain why oh, in no, moments totally. of silence you're going to hear. <laughs> so the picture of Mia says always in our hearts on it. Torg. Torg hate ask this question, but you know what? Torg, Torg don't think Torg have to ask this question. Torg, Torg just assume Mia inspire all yep, this. They all nod together. She made her own family. 
twerk. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's being so loud. <laughs> I can just hear it. It's so loud. Sorry. It's actually not um, coming through. Colt, uh, Colt, give me a lick, licking audio check, please. <laughs> okay, good. So like a, like a two. So, uh, Mike, are we can okay? You, to move can you pot that two? up? Yeah. Can we pot that lick up a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give right. a little bit of, of an echo on there will be nice. Yeah, a little reverb. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be great. Make it real sound sound real good. Sound it's like can be, that can be the stinger for whenever D. <laughs> <laughs> we can make it a haunt your dreams kind of a thing. Um, uh, they they all are are very somber and resolute about that and seem at peace with it. So Mia. Mia gone now. She was killed during one of our actions. How? What action? Who order action? Torg want to know all detail. We decide everything together because she said that's what your family does. And we decided the curse is a bad man and we want him to go away. So we've been fighting back. Well, Torque find that very noble. They literally cheer. There's like a, they don't have, they're not like huzzah people, but there is a cheer and they all look very pleased. A couple of them start crying. Oh, uh, Torg not want you to rely on Torg validation for validation, but Torg validate. So one of them actually takes you by the hand and leads you outside and points at the wall. And what you just said is on the wall because you literally did say that to Mia. I believe you literally said that as Jen during the cast. So they point at your own words and say, that's what, what Mia taught us. Thank you. <laughs> Torgy, sorry, I wanted to mute it just so that while you were talking, you wouldn't hear. The uh, what, what you don't know about me, it's a little like the Hulk. I hear that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you also have tinnitus? <laughs> 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 Tor gets very choked up and starts, you know, tearing up again. Uh, and Tor say, Tor proud of Mia. Mia die, Torg assume, fighting hard. Uh huh. Well, she wasn't very good at it, but she was devoted. Torg, Torg must ask, did other Torgs win that day? Yes, we did. We lost a couple, but we won. Do you, do you know who we are, Torg? Torg is shame to admit, Torg. Not know you exists uh but torg also very proud to know you not exist because that mean you exist for you and not simply for torg to notice we are people that didn't have other families we are people who weren't accepted because some of us are mutants uh we have a goblin here we have a couple people that are two soul people and their families didn't want them and they found a family here and now we are Torg. That make Torg very happy. Good. Well, we're gonna go fuck up some of uh, Curse's men and we can use some help. Ooh, Torg in the Torgs, Torg like it. Sounds like a band. I Torg and the, the, the Torg, 
the Torgers, Torg and the Torgets, Torg and the Torpedoes. Yeah, I don't I don't like the Torgets thing that but Torpedoes I like. Torpedoes. Torpedoes. Oh no. Yeah. Say like that a to torpedo. A few times. Oh, yeah. right. Let's right. give that one a, a swipe right. left, whatever that means. <laughs> Torg, um, Torg, see how it sounds like bad thing when Torg mean like boomy, shooty thing, not touchy bad. Torg, see that now. Uh, <laughs> inside, uh, they have shown. Uh, Torgnados? Everybody, they've Sorry. shown everybody else a map. They've located the weapons cache that Curse is using to keep his forces supplied. And they are planning to attack it. Uh, one of them tells you, yeah, we, we're building this, this battle suit because we know it's going to be really heavily defended. And we're a little worried. Like we, we understand that, like Torg says, sometimes death happens. You have to be strong anyway. Keep going. But we also know the word attrition, and we're worried. But you have guns? We do. I I went mine out very carelessly with a lot of finger twirls, and I'm like, yeah, look at (laughs) it! It's a pistol! Sometimes it jams. It's really a so you're like the the poster uh, girl for bad trigger discipline. <laughs> oh, I, I <laughs> that sir is the name of my band. <laughs> trigger discipline. Yes, Lambda 100 percent joins D in like twirling the pistols. Like, oh my, oh God. yeah, let's go. So <laughs> Goldwater, to your horror, the impressionable room of young people start also twirling the weapons around. <laughs> You know, in a small room full of like twirling handguns. Oh god! I, <laughs> yeah, I just go. Oh, oh, no, 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 right, no, right, no, 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 no. Wait, and so and so, uh, Lambda and I go into very, very uh, acknowledging that we're endangering the lives of children or childrenish people, and so we start doing our battle in super slow motion, and we encourage everybody to get real slow mo about it, and then we play slow motion death battle pretend, and we see who stands winning, and it's Lambda. So a, a little cockroach girl walks up to you. Oh, like you do, Miss Miss D. Mm-hmm. You know we're mostly your age or older, right? <laughs> I mean, I'll I'll play slow motion kung fu with you, but but I'm 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 like seventeen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm 20. Yeah, well, That's those, a big joke. Those three guys that were trolling the guns, they're all in their 20s. Well, that's yeah. fine. Good for them. I'm happy for them. I, The one that has like two faces, he's kind of cute though, huh? I wouldn't know. I already have my eyes on my boyfriend. He's not here though. So three of them hear that and you wouldn't know come right in <laughs> and start wanting to get details about the boyfriend out of you. Oh my god, yeah. Like when he gets really heated or really spicy about something, his head goes on fire and it's not even a euphemism. It's real. So cute. Uh, <laughs> all right, so they ask Torg, will you help us with the, uh, the gun cache? Oh, I, Torg thought it it, it it obvious when when Torg say Torg and the and the Torgs and uh, Torg and the Torgnados that clearly this was was a a thumbs up from the Torg. <laughs> so, will you plan and uh, execute an attack on the weapons cache? Yes. Because 
I was going to real talk here. This is clearly a pride themed episode. There is no way that I can execute the raid in the weapons cache to be a celebration of pride. So it happens off camera. There's a lot of shooting and a lot of explosions. Many of them made very colorful by Lambda. Uh, and then. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Can I add, <laughs> can I add one thing? One thing. Oh, please. So since we're adding in uh, color Yo, during please. the explosions, what if all of their uh, bullets are loaded with glitter? So it's like glitter and lights and blood. So at least it's just a little fabulous. Well, can we use could... a little bit of those paint cans as like bombs? <laughs> Well, and you could have had them because they would have stuff to reload their ammo, right? And they have some shotguns. So adding some glitter in with the shot wouldn't be hard. And the, the throw a pink can and shoot it, that's also not hard. And then Lambda can obviously make, like, so we were going to get, like, a montage of just the most gloriously colored, horrible death. <laughs> hey, hey, Mike? Yeah. I got an idea and maybe see what you'll think about this is what if we all, each one of us got 30 seconds to describe one cool thing we did or saw during the, the battle. Done and done, you begin. Okay. Um, mine is that uh, while all of these wild, uh, um, variously sized and, and colored uh, Torgs uh, are running past me, I'm walking incredibly calm and stoic shooting my pistol as fireworks and uh, paint explosions go off all around me. That's my cool moment. And Kaden? Lambda is almost full clip auto, just <laughs> giggling and laughing as, <laughs> as they aim not at people, not at anything, anything else, but specifically <laughs> but specifically the tossed spray paint cans as they explode into both color and shrapnel and blast people away. And uh, Dean. I am uh, very seriously considering dumping my boyfriend for Lambda. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, I am running as fast as I possibly can with as many, because I have pockets in this suit and stuff, uh, as many paint cans as I can gather while I'm running. And then as I pass people, I'm smashing uh, the paint cans together on their heads so that it cuts into their brains and then it explodes and uh, it makes its own little fireworks. And I'm just squeeing the whole time. So, so Danielle, you, you know I love you, right? You worry me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Eric. Uh, so after careful consideration, um, Eric has decided to paint Karen several different colors. So uh, Karen is going to, he, he has come to terms with the fact that Karen um, is an individual and that they are symbiotic together. And it's not that she is subjugated to him, but that they are together. And if they're going to maintain this marital relationship, that he's going to have to get out of the way and learn to love her individuality, which means he doesn't decide whether or not she wants to fire. She fires because they fire together. So as a result, he has decided to paint her uh, in, a, in rainbow, bright rainbow colors and has resumed his, um, his, his carnal bloodlust for slaughter <laughs> and... Um, is resolved his his visit with Jesus with his uh, idea of the independentness of his weapon, and uh, that's that's what happened. And last but not least, Torg, what sort of mayhem are you? Do you, you get up to? And you are muted. Uh, so Torg has obviously been taking part, but. For the most part, most part, Torg is just making sure that they're backing up anyone that's struggling. So, like, kind of just playing, like, okay, you're, I'll, uh, you know, the cavalry, right? Exactly. But just having a lot of fun and mostly just enjoying uh, watching everything like explode in color and yeah. and and glitter. But they get 
there once so there's like one final person or whatever there's like one last thing between them and getting all the guns and so Torg takes a oil barrel that Torg had brought along with them uh, which is filled with paint confetti glitter gunpowder other explosives etc etc and takes it smiling throws it up in the air and then punches it towards the uh, the last sand <laughs> and it explodes on the person bursting everything everywhere to where it's just this huge insane like fireworks and glitter and guts and bones and guns and everything so 15 minutes before this all begins uh mike i'm gonna need you here in a second um there are all told about 12 of curses men working a secret cache and it's effectively like a almost like a quartermaster for his various forces when they need to resupply when they need uh, to, sh to change what the loadouts are, they come here. And uh, these, these are those that have drawn the duty of protecting this very important tactical position. Hey, uh, Gordon. Yeah. Uh, you hear about the, uh, this, this Torg phone? Yeah, I mean, I hear so many different stories. I don't know what's real, man. Like, what's he, 12 feet tall, weighs 600 pounds. Yeah, and I hear sometimes they say, uh, uh, like, man, sometimes, but, like, is this, like, a they or something? Like, I can't follow any of that. Yeah, I mean, you know, people could be what they want to be, but I don't know. It kind of freaks me out, honestly. But there's a braid, right? There's what? I heard there's a braid. I heard we cut the braid off. I thought we, we got them. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, Torg's like a werewolf. I hear st I've been hearing stories for years about Torg. Well, we got double guard here. Like, yeah, I mean, I no I one's getting through us, man. Like, not today. And then the camera pulls back, and we would then see the montage of battle that involves <laughs> explosions of color, uh, flashes of paint, that spatter bright colors on everyone, flashes of glitter, and the most disorienting thing the position of the defenders is, everyone is super upbeat and gleeful, even when arms and legs go flying, but the arms and legs have like purple on them. Um, and uh, Gordo and Thompson are running away. What the hell, man? What the hell I, was that? I have no idea, but I believe in werewolves now. You know the worst part? It was fucking beautiful, man. I know. If I wasn't on the wrong side of it, I probably would have just sat there and laughed. He uh, stops. And he reaches in his pocket and he pulls out a multicolored braid. You know, I, I bet if we went back, do, do you think? I mean, Chris is kind of a prick. Fuck curse, man. Let's go back. Hey, hey, guys. We're Torg, too. We're Torg we are too. Torg. We are Torg. <laughs> about an hour and a half later at the camp, about two miles from the cache. Um, what I need to know is how Torg will leave this. Do you leave the group and retire to lead the, the, the tour gets? Do you um, tell them good work, carry on? Do you tell them to break up and take straight jobs? Uh, what, I mean, that seems incredibly unlikely, but what's, what do you leave them with? What do you do? Torg want all the Torgs to know how much joy and pride Torg get when Torg see what you have built here. Torg love 
that Torg's found Torg family, just like Torg. Torg, of course, cannot stay. Torg has own family, but Torg wants the Torgs to know that Torg will be visiting every chance Torg gets. And also, Torg promises to one day explain why the Citrus Caesar so important to Torg. But Torg does have one thing to ask of the Torgs. Ask anything. When the Torgs found this place, Was there anything that, that seemed like it could possibly be left from Boom Boom? Left from pre-sad bomb dust time? Anything with, with Citrus Caesar paper or, or logo or, or, or just anything from original building or is all just left building? So one of them actually nods as though they know what you're talking about. They go behind uh, the counter and they come back with a little branded cooler that's got the logo on it. And they pass the cooler over and I'm going to end the episode there. Uh, and for now, what's inside the cooler is mysterious. Uh, I will say though, this obviously, the, the party will figure out that what was happening is they've been attacking Curse's men. Oh, and yeah, yeah. They, well, they had had losses, so Curse had been finding these braids. Assumed the Torg was directly involved, so came after Torg. Yeah. The upshot of this episode is going to be they're going to have to get the hell out of the ninth life, which means the pressure is on to go find a new home. Fortunately, we have an incredibly special guest star next week who's going to help you with that exactly. Before I hand over to. Uh, Mike, to tell you all about that, I do want to say on a personal note, uh, happy Pride Day. Uh, I have so many friends uh, that are as diverse as the, the fucking beautiful rainbow. Um, I am among my bright, shining friends, perhaps the uh, pastiest and dullest. I shine in my own way, but I do have two beloved children who both uh, fly Pride flags. So, uh, Lauren and Crow, I love you very, very much. So, Mike? Well, that's a fun one to follow, but yes, we uh, echo that sentiment here at 819 too. Happy Pride Month. Um, and you should make every month Pride Month because just, you should just be fucking proud of Pride all the time. Um, so in addition to that, um, let me say that Mike was not kidding. We have a very, very special guest star for the next two weeks, Mr. Colton Dunn from, uh, from Superstore um, and other many important things will be with us for the next couple of weeks. Please tune in for that. Um, also next Monday, we've got another Tales from the Wasteland. Um, it is the second half of the, uh, Mike was the Goblin Saga, is that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep, uh, totally. next, next Monday night. Um, which obviously close to my heart, the Goblin Saga. Um, we want to thank you uh, all for, for coming to watch and for being in chat. Um, Breeze, thank you for being our moderator this week. Um, Andreas Fabis, as always, for being our disembodied German. Um, Colt Joyce for being our technical director, as always. Um, and then uh, we wanted to shout out our uh, one of our moderators, uh, Qui-Gon, um, who had a bit of a, a car accident apparently over the weekend. So we want to make sure that uh, they are doing okay. Um, and so please get in touch. Let us know how you are. Um, and then uh, our historian, Brett, um, who is always here and making sure that everybody's keeping their stuff um, straight. Thank you uh, very much again. And we will see you in the wasteland next time.